I've got a question for you. What the fuck is going on with NLC? Uh, I don't remember the last time it was updated, and it's by far my favorite area of the game. But that doesn't change the fact that I have no clue what they're going to be doing with that piece of content. And I'm, unfortunately, a little scared that it's going to be removed. Especially since, if you actually look at the history of NLC, it's had a lot of impact on the overall GMS meta, so to speak. Uh, it was responsible for introducing a lot of meta-defining items, equips, even just straight up uh, consumable items. And they had that huge revamp and push for like what, like a s supposedly establishing some sort of storyline, and then it seems like they gave up on it. Uh, for those that do not know, there was a blockbuster not just the Masteria one, or like Black Heaven, or uh, Heroes of Maple, but there was one called Monad, and that came out right as Flames was introduced to GMS. I think it came out in the same patch, or r around the same time, and I deem that period of Maple as probably the t a huge turning point for, for at least Reboot, because Flames made Hard Lucid accessible to the majority of the, or to a, a greater uh, greater amount of the player base maybe not the majority but a greater portion of the player base was now able to participate in hard lucid and that was weird because monad was a personally a buggy piece of shit content and had a very confusing and lackluster storyline but it did interact with the nlc uh, content a fair bit, and not to not to state the obvious, but NLC's content has been butchered numerous times compared to what it was in pre Big Bang or around that era of Maple Story. And granted, I was very young when that NL that iteration of NLC was what was canon and seen as the only NLC back then. So I can't really fully comment on it. Like I never re ran Crimson Wood Keep Party Quest. You think? <laughs> Like I was that in end game of player, like what how old would I have been? I would have been like six or eight, eight or ten, six to ten, somewhere in that range. Um But it doesn't change the fact that NLC has a lot of history with um GMS. And I think that's why GMS still has the NLC content, not to mention that the the revamped Bob sprites are actually pretty sick. It's just a shame they haven't done anything with that piece of content because it's technically a sub 200 area, which means it has nothing else going for it. Um, when it was f the NLC revamp was first introduced, it was somewhat leaked, somewhat data mined, not really data mined, but uh, somewhat leaked what the set effect of the new equips that they were introducing. Uh, nowadays, if anyone, if you were to talk about the NLC equip sets and the whole the only relevant one is the glow in his heart, which if you are well versed in the progression, equip progression of Maple Story, uh, of the GMS GMS's uh, pro uh, equip progression, it is a best in slot ring technically. It's just that the method to acquire it is so fucking time consuming and ridiculous that there's only six, I, there's less than 10 of them at 22 stars in reboot I, as, at least as far as, aware, I, as far as i'm aware there's less than 10. uh i know of three off the top of my head and i'm pretty sure there's not many more than that if there is any more so i'm gonna go with a safe less than 10 in existence at 22. um and it's not necessarily a shame but as i do have a feeling that non KMS gear that is best in slot is dangerous to have in this day and age, especially with how KMS treats uh, non KMS content, or how Nexon treats non KMS content, especially in their overseas regions, which is the only, well, which are the regions that get the non KMS content. But I digress. So my question is where, what are they going to do with NLC? Because it's kind of stuck in this weird limbo. They removed Monad, and they were building up to like this grand storyline. Like they were connecting some attributes that were from old lore of NLC 
to this new Monad storyline, and they were going to tie it into the Sengoku storyline and why the why Kana and uh, Hayato were even in Maple World. And then Monad released. It was buggy. It was removed a few years later. And NLC got revamped in that time, or had the major revamp. Uh, but nothing else came of it, <laughs> which is very interesting. NLC is still going to remain relevant, and it's kind of difficult for them to remove that piece of content because it is technically still supplying best in slot equips to Night Walkers and Night Lords. Balance Furies are the strongest star in the game. Uh, granted, it's only 30 attack compared to like Ilbies or Flame Throwing Stars, which is the KMS best in slot, which is 29 attack, so it's only one attack better. But they are all they are also an iconic piece of Maple Story history in my mind. I remember when I was young, I used to, when I used to vacation in Maine, uh, there was a Newberry comic shop, and it was the only comic shop that I had ever been to that sold the Maple Story trading card game cards. And so I could only get them during the summer when I went on family vacation. And I would always buy like a, a few booster packs and then use them when I got home because you know, that's that's what that was the whole purpose of it. It's like the trading cards were cool and all, I guess. Like they had very original art on them, like very uh for the time period, very original art. Like nothing that is as stylized and as um vibrant, I guess, as the current art for Maple Story is. I feel like that's just because Maple Story was in its early, very much earlier stages. Which is kind of impressive to me that they even chose to invest in a trading card game in the overseas areas. Uh, obviously it didn't perform super well as it was discontinued. Uh, I think it only ran for a couple of years, maybe a few years. But like, I remember my next door neighbor and I, my best friend, uh, we would... When I would get back from vacation, we would, we would load up the coupon codes or the cash up codes that were included in the booster packs and try and figure out how to get the Stormcaster gloves. We never figured it out, but we tried. Uh, I think at some point they changed it so they didn't even give the ITCG crafting items. They were not straight up given, they just straight up gave you the item. So we got like a miner's helmet or something, and that was like... And anvils didn't exist, so it was just like a useless item. Just looked ugly. It was a yellow mi yellow miner's hat. I remember that very, very vividly. We were like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> um, so I don't. Yeah, I don't think anvils existed, so there was like no. It was just a collector's item. Um, but I digress. As always, I digress. Um, I don't know. I. NLC is probably my favorite area of Maple Story. Uh, I think I no I no I don't think I recorded my uh, gear overview there, and even though I didn't get to experience NLC at the height of its impact on Maple Story's history, I still it still holds a very special place in my heart, and I wish they got to do more with it. There is. I've talked about this before, um, but I think having six months heads up to what's coming in KMS or what's coming from KMS to GMS and the overseas areas is nice. It, you know, it gives you like a little precursor, but it also ruins any sense of uh, hype, so to speak, because you have to wait six months, roughly six months to... <laughs> to to actually get the thing that you were remotely excited for when it revealed. And after those six months, it's kind of hard to remain excited. I think the last time I was actually genuinely excited for a Maple Story patch was when they introduced the Showa Town revamp. And that was because it was completely new and I had no idea why they were doing it. And uh, since I am an anvil hunter at times, I it was a pretty nice update for me. Like. Um, I hunted the Fallen Leaf Earrings, which are my drop gear anvil, for, I don't know, like an hour or two, and then like, what else did I do? Also just unlocking the boss to hopefully find, farm a ter terminus weapon. Never, never managed to get one, though they do now drop, apparently, because there's a, there's a few in reboot that I've seen in Smegas and such. 
But um, updates like that, like the ones that come out of left field that we don't see coming, I think are the most entertaining and the most interesting because we don't know anything about it. And because I still think there's more to show a town than than there is to, than there than is actually known, like the Ninja Castle and Show a Town update. I think there's still more anvils that we do not full we do not have fully documented because people aren't engaging with that content as aggressively as they are engaging with KMS content specifically because we don't know its worth and also it's very niche. Anvil hunting is very niche. Um and also like Nixon's not one to give us drop rates or confirm what drops from what what boss or what mob. Like uh the Korean fan that OG uh dagger. I'm pretty sure it still drops from some mob in the game. Uh they used to drop from I believe fire sentinels, but it was shadow patch shadow removed in the rise update or at least that's the update that people started noting it, it they were not able to find certain cash shop uh drops um a, another big cash shop drop that used to or not cash shop drop but an item that was commonly used for anvil that dropped from mobs was homunculus used to drop a transparent claw but it was not the cash shop transparent claw it was an actual item called transparent claw and uh, you could anvil your claw to it so you could get a quote unquote cheaper transparent claw uh, there are some other cash shop items that were made into real weapons quote unquote that stopped dropping and there was also some other niche drops that stopped dropping like such as the korean fan but I've heard whispers on the wind that it still does drop from some mob and it's just at an abysmally low drop rate. And I've seen, there was one uh, Korean YouTuber I used to watch who did rare item hunts. Like he would hunt for the bamboo sword or the kendo sword. I don't know what it's called in GMS or the localized version, but he'd hunt for like rare items. And he did do a hunt for the Korean fan. I think he did like four waps. At, I think it was the drumming bunnies. So, eight hours of farming and did not see it. So, if it actually drops, it is abysmally rare. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it drops from some mob here in the, that is in the game. And I wouldn't, I would be even less surprised if it uh, drops from a non-KMS mob that no one has just chosen to hunt for hours on end because what's the point if you there's no confirmation that it's actually even going to even have a chance of dropping the item that you're looking for like uh it's not just that like it, you may not get the item drops there's no confirmation that e is even on the drop table because we don't know the drop table and i think that is a huge uh huge that's it's sad i think is what it is because I imagine the developers for these non-KMS updates do push put a lot of effort into them. And I think it shows in some of the some of the non-KMS content. Like the show up patch, I think was really fun. I think that was really fun. And some of those drop tables are so wacky uh that like I have to imagine that someone who used to play the game back in the day knew that these items were uh had some nostalgic sig nostalgic significance to people. Which is why they were included on the drop table. The only earring I want now, I mean this is tangentially related, but like I have the crystal leaf earrings as my anvil for my damage gear, and I have the fallen leaf earrings as uh my drop gear anvil. I would like some just green leaf earrings now. Uh I think that would be cool to have the full set done. Also, please give us more anvils for top and bottom. I don't want to be stuck in the eternal anvil. Uh, there's very limited items you can anvil for the top and bottom. And granted, the anniversary event that's coming up this year is huge for anvils. Like, shield anvils are few and far between, but we're getting so many in this one patch uh, that I'm very excited for it. It's unfortunately going to make some of the quote-unquote rare or more the discontinued uh anvils like not nearly as unique for but 
as time goes on, they'll become unique again because less and less people will have them. Um, also sucks that in Reboot, you can't really have a mule that just holds your collected your collectible items. <sighs> this all stems from just talking about NLC, too. Uh, NLC has such significant items to the old meta of Maple Story. Mark of Nara Kane. Uh, that's the big one. That was the huge one. It was a pendant, silver deputy star. Or I don't think it was a pendant. I don't even know because I wasn't playing at that time, or I, I never experienced it. Mark of Nara Kane, silver deputy star. Uh, not to mention the EXP meta of fighting Bigfoot back then. Balanced Furies, Crystal Ildies, uh, Face Stompers, Crystal Leaf Earrings. Uh, what else was relevant? Uh, no, the glo there weren't really gloves that were relevant from there. But oh, Stormcaster gloves. What am I talking about? Yes, there were relevant gloves. Uh, I wish I had face stompers as an anvil. They are discontinued as they are. I don't believe they're available in the Raven Coin Shop in NLC anymore. I think you can still get Stormcaster gloves, which I should probably pick up a pair because I don't know when. I don't know what they're gonna do with NLC. And now that I've mentioned it, I feel like they I feel like something awful might happen to that area. Because it's, I don't think it's a part of any other region, uh, of Maple Story. I think it's only, I think it's actually one of a few pieces of content that is GMS exclusive that isn't removed. Jet was not, you know, even Jet wasn't GMS exclusive. That was in JMS too, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and not the Zen version, straight up Jet. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I just want cool anvils, dude. I want cool anvils, I want NLC to have cool anvils, more cool anvils to hunt. Maybe I'm just a bit of a manic. I probably am. I play this I play Maple Story after all. But I just want to know. I just want to know what they're gonna do with NLC. Like, the Crimson Wood Keep is still there. I don't think you can even enter it. I think there's just like a cutscene involved with the quest line for NLC. And for whatever reason, it requires one of every class, which makes sense because that's, I believe, what was required for the PQ when it was a PQ. And the PQ is never going to come back. They confirmed that it can't come back just due to uh, advancements made in the, the game. Like, the game is just not at the same place it was back when that was a relevant PQ. They don't have the dev team to... They don't have the resources to allocate to making sure that PQ functions because it's not a part of KMS either. And also, I think it's very archaic to restrict uh, party building. Uh, talk to any endgame player about old Saren back when that was first becoming an accomplishable boss. Being restricted to rel uh, realistically three classes. Um, Night Lord, Fire Poison, and Phantom because you needed the untouchable debuff to have a realistic chance at surviving. Uh... Yeah, not to also also not to mention that like your two other slots were taken up by Bishop and Kana, so half your party was already uh <laughs> was already composed before you even started forming your party. So it really restricted party building. So I don't think having a party quest, no matter how entertaining or how good the rewards are, that requires um you know, a specific party composition, even if it's not like specific classes but just job branches. I still I still don't really vibe with that in all honesty i think that is a poor choice especially in this day and age um you want to make party questing uh rewarding and fun you can't be super restrictive on how it functions either amoria has a very very small restriction of you just need one of each gender male you just need at least one male and at least one female in a party uh, and you need a party of six and they all need to be married. That's not that big of a restriction. And APQ is primarily done for, or no, strictly done for apples. There are a few um, cool anvils you can get from it. At least I think they're cool. But uh, they're kind of annoying to get. I believe you have, for the anvil I'm thinking of, you need to have three married couples in the same party. Like, like, you and your spouse have to be in the party, and then the two other, or the four other people also have to be married to each other as well. There has to be two other couples married to each other. And that unlocks a bonus stage of Amoria PQ, where you can potentially get uh, K 
capes or like certain anvils and i it's like a black and red cape it i'm color's cool it looks like a raggedy cape though if you you're familiar with what that item looks like uh it's just black and red uh but i don't know i always find myself fascinated by not necessarily old content but content that isn't documented well and that content tends to be older and tends to be overseas content like nlc showa town uh what would neo tokyo uh i think terra forest was also one of those pieces of content i'm not don't quote me on that though uh what else was interesting the night market which was uh i believe is what kerning square was based off of it was tms's don't quote me on that original area there was also the what's it called the floating market for thailand maple story was a piece of original content I remember as a kid, I would look up, like, what monsters are in this level range, and there'd be, like, some wacky level 30 salamanders that I knew I would, could never fight, but not just because I would never get to that level, but also because it wasn't in the region of Maple Story I played. Um, some other pieces of content that are... Uh, Twisted Aquarium. That was a wild piece of content. Don't know why it existed. Still, to this day, do not know why it existed. I don't know what it was even attempting to accomplish. I guess it was attempting to make a Aqua Road relevant again, but, like, just make Aqua Road relevant. Don't make a another theme dungeon that's based off of Aqua Road. Uh, but, like, that was a pretty interesting piece of content because it was reskinned, uh, palette-swapped monsters from, oh, guess what? Singapore. <laughs> Uh, if I remember correctly, that's what it was. Uh, I can go on and on, obviously, but there's a lot of pieces of removed content that, while had little to no use, well, the vast majority of these areas had little to no use to the average mapler, and especially your uh, progression-focused mapler, or person pursuing endgame, uh, yeah, it was, it doesn't bother those players that it was removed, but it's still, it's still weird to know that they even spent time developing that content just to remove it if they knew it was either incomplete and they were hoping to expand on it later and then they never got approved to expand it, or it was just such a bad piece of content that, uh, from the beginning, why was it implemented in the first place in i.e. the case of Monad, like, they obviously wanted to do something there, but it was so buggy and so under- well, not underappreciated, it was not appreciated because it was a bad piece of content, that obvious- like, that I'm willing to bet that's the reason we didn't see more expansion on the NLC, Monad, and Sengoku lore, even though they looked like they were building up to something. I'll try and remember to include a link to the- they had an animated video, a part of the Monad, um, blockbuster towards the end of it that was supposed to be a grand reveal how uh there's this artifact in nlc's lore called the antelian i think you can st it's still talked about in game because there's the blockbuster for masteria um don't even get me started on masteria gms versus masteria in kms because when they localized the regions they decided to say demons are from tinerum slash masteria but we already had Mysteria, because that's where NLC is located, so is that the same place? Not exactly, because how you used to unlock Golix was tied into the KMS version of Mysteria, but not our version of Mysteria. And now if you look at it nowadays, Golix is tied to NLC's Mysteria, not the KMS Mysteria. And I don't know if it's referred to as Tinerum now completely, or if what happened to that. Uh, I guess we can all just take solace in the fact that we do not have to do Golix prequests anymore. Uh, the Labyrinth was dog shit. Uh, if for those that remember those days. <sighs> oh my gosh, I've been talking for 25 minutes about NLC and various pieces of removed content. Uh, it is 3.30 in the morning. I could not sleep. I had... 
I'm very caffeine sensitive. I had an uh, the, the, the frappuccino thing, and it had espresso in it, and I forgot, and I had that at 4 p.m., and I'm still up. Please help me. I'm gonna try and sleep. No, I'm not. I'm gonna finish this WAP, but I'll see you friends later.